In this video, I'm going to show you the newest course that I made for my website, which is a audio streaming application. I'm going to start by showing you an application demo, and then we're going to talk about the technical details of what you're going to be learning in the course and why you might want to learn those things. I'm going to show you how to build an audio streaming application on Android. I'm going to show you from basically nothing, absolutely nothing. So from the ground up, uh, pretty much like opening Android Studio, going to new project, start a new project, selecting a blank activity from basically absolutely nothing. So without uh, further ado, let's take a look at the application demo. Here's what the application will look like when the user first starts the app. There's going to be a list of categories. So in this case, there's two categories, the podcast category and the music category, and the user can choose one of those. Of course, by the end of the course, you'll be able to customize this to fit your needs however you want it. This is just a demo, so I have two categories just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on here. So if I select a category, I'm going to select the music category. I'm taken to a new screen where there's a list of artists. It would have been very similar if I selected podcasts. It just basically goes from categories to artists. Now if I select an artist, I'm taken to a page that shows all of the music that was published by that particular artist. So as you can see here, I have a couple of songs to choose from. Once again, I just want to mention that this is going to be cust fully customizable to you. This is just a demo, so I have a few songs in here, but theoretically you could have thousands or millions of songs in this list. It's going to be totally up to you and what you want to do with the application. Now I'm going to play an audio file. Watch carefully to the status bar at the top of the screen and the media controller down at the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to click on one and then it starts playing. Obviously you can't hear the audio because I've blanked it out. It would be too loud and it would kind of disrupt what I'm saying, but the audio file is playing right now. The thing, the first thing to notice is the notification up in the notification bar. That indicates that something is playing. You can also look down at the seek bar and it will begin tracking playback, playback progress. Once the audio file is playing, there's a few other things that I can do to control the playback. The first thing is I can move the seek bar to progress the audio file forward. I can move it backwards or forwards wherever, wherever I want to. That's just going to skip the track. I'm sure I don't need to tell you what a seek bar does. The second thing is I can play or pause it by pressing the play or pause icon down in the bottom right. And remember that little notification up in the top? I can actually pull that down and control playback from there. So I can skip it forward, I can play or pause, or I can skip it backwards. Also, if I lock the screen, that notification still stays there. So I can skip it ahead, I can play or pause, or I can skip backwards. I can do all the same controls that I could when the screen was unlocked. So now that you've watched an application demo, you should have a good idea of whether or not you want to continue watching this video and find out more about the technical details. Basically, you should know if you're interested or you're not. So now we're going to talk about some of the technical details of what you're going to be learning. So the first thing is what I'm going to use to play the audio files. Typically, this is probably done using the standard media player library that comes with the Android SDK, but I've chosen to use a different library. We're going to be using ExoPlayer. So it's a library known as ExoPlayer. And fun fact, ExoPlayer is actually the same library that the YouTube mobile application uses to play their music. So literally, if you open up your phone, I guess I can, <laughs> if you open up your phone, you open up the YouTube app, the, the video that's playing in YouTube is using the ExoPlayer library. So that's the same one that we're going to be looking at in the course. So you might be wondering why I chose to use ExoPlayer instead of the standard media player library, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. And essentially, it's just better. Um, I don't know what else to say other than it's better. It's more customizable. It's faster. It's basically just a step up in every way from the standard media player. So obviously it's it's a better better library to use, so that's what I want to teach in the course. If you've ever thought about building any kind of a media streaming app or an audio streaming app, you probably thought about using a service class to host your media player and then play that that audio or that video. In this course, we are going to be using a service class, but it's going to be a special service class that the Android documentation recommends using for streaming audio and video. It's known as Media Browser Service Compat. It's basically just like the standard Android service class, but it has added functionality for playing media. It's built to play media. It's literally constructed and built to play media. And there's a whole bunch of classes that are associated with it that we're also going to learn how to use. Essentially, it's the current best practice way to build an app to stream media. So of course, that's what I want to show you. Next is data. Where does the data come from? 
I want to make this app as realistic as possible. And in order to make it as real as possible, you need data, you need some audio files, you need some artists, you need some playlists, you need all these things. And where, where do you get that data is the next question. In all the applications that I saw online, the demo applications, for example, that Google puts on their GitHub page, they hard coded in media files for the examples. And that's great. It gives you a good starting point. But I don't think that hard coding in resources is a realistic enough way to teach about this content. Because in, in the real world, you're going to be building an app for a radio station, or you're going to build a app for podcasting, playing video, something like that. And that data is going to come from the internet. There's no way that that data is going to be stored locally on the Android device. So in the course, we're going to be using Firestore, which is a Firebase tool, it's a database tool, for those of you who don't know, to store the data online. And then I'm going to be querying that data from Firestore and then displaying it in the app. And if you don't know what Firebase is, if you don't know what Firestore is, don't worry about it. I'm going to take you through all of that in the course. But also, more importantly, I'm going to be giving you access to my Firebase project so that you can jump right into development. You're not going to have to start a Firebase project. You're not going to have to know how to use Firestore, any of that stuff. I'm going to have the media files already on there so that in the, in the app, you can just connect to my Firestore and download the files. So in the course, I'm, I'm extremely detailed. When, uh, like I said at the start of this video, when I, when I start teaching, it's essentially going to be like opening Android Studio, going to new project and opening a blank project. It's essentially building this from absolutely nothing. So as a consequence of that, you're going to be able to see a lot of other things not related to streaming audio. You're going to learn how to build a custom fragment management system, how to properly manage fragments, how to manage memory with re regarding fragments and fragment instances and reusing fragments, how to set up a recycler view, how to do all these things. I'm going to take you through the step by step process, exactly how I built the app. So there's there's a lot of a lot of extras, basically. And it's okay. Also, if you don't want to know those things, like if you already know how to use recycle view, if you already feel confident about your fragments and making them efficient and reusing them, things like that, you don't have to watch that stuff, you can just um, skip ahead to the content strictly on the media player service. And that's totally fine. But for those of you who want to see everything, I needed to make sure that I included everything. So all that stuff is going to be there for you. So if I was to say any kind of final words to anybody who's on the fence about buying this course, by the way, it's going to be a members only course on my website, the membership is $30 Canadian a month. If you're on the fence, and you're not really sure about the value. Um, this if you know my content, if you know my plural site courses, you know, the courses that I put on YouTube, they're always very high quality, I always try to take that extra step to try and make it as realistic as possible. Because I think that one of the most important things when you learn Android development or programming in general, <clears throat> is it needs to be realistic, because otherwise, you just have all these kind of random facts floating around, and no way to connect them. But if you see the big picture, and you see how they all tie together, then that really sticks with you. And this course is no different. This is by far my best course so far. I, I probably say that about every new course that I make. But it's true, because I'm always making it better and better. I'm always moving the needle a little bit farther forward every single day, every single course. So if you're on the fence, and you're not sure, get the course, you will not be disappointed. For $30. That's like an amazing amount of value. So I definitely stand by that. And I'll refund your money if you don't like it. So just keep that in mind. So yeah, I guess I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the course.